Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to today's program. And I've got to, I am very excited because I have been following this gentleman on Instagram for quite a long time. He is a fellow cyclist. I'm a cyclist, and I have been learning so much just by following him on Instagram. And today, we get to welcome none other than the cyclist in black, the lone wolf himself, Sean Seiko. Welcome to the program, Sean. Ward, thank you very much for a wonderful introduction over there. Um, oh. It's really great, to, it's really great to, to be on your show. Well, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know that Sean is coming to us via satellite from Cape Town, South Africa. And thank you so much for your time, Sean. And I want to just kind of kick this off right now and tell us who is Sean Seiko. That's a that's a, a good question, and um, you know, there's a, um, a an age-old saying, "Know thyself," um, which is which is very important. Um, it, you know, it stems back from the art of war. Uh, you know, to if you if you uh, if you know yourself um, and you don't know the enemy, you have a fifty percent chance of winning. If you um, don't know yourself and you know the enemy, you will lose. Um, so it's, it's, it's a, it's a basically what I may have got, got it wrong, but what it, what it says is that the best way to go forward in life is to actually know who you are and, 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 and basically know who you are. And that's yeah, the long well, and the short of it. I, I to agree put it with in, that. To, to put, to put it in a nutshell, who am I? Yeah. I'm just a regular bloke who lives to ride. I love that. And, and that, you know, what I loved, I think one of the reasons I started following you on, on Instagram is was the whole lone wolf mentality. You cycle by yourself, I cycle by myself, and I, and I may run into a couple of cycling friends here and there, but it's more of just pulling up to one another, having a short chat, and then we go on our own merry way. I like riding by myself. I'm not into group riding, but yeah. when it comes to cycling, for you, how did you actually get into cycling? Um, well, just, just, I just want to clarify a, a point. I never, I never ever really was um, this uh, person who had to always ride on their, their, their own. Um, in fact, there was a point in my life, and I'll get onto how I got into cycling, that I hated being alone. Okay, really? so it was, it's become an, an acquired, it's almost like um, eating stinky French cheese for the first time. Oh, this is terrible. And then you just get a craving for it. And it's the only thing you want to eat. So this is how it, how it came about. But to answer your question, how I got into cycling, um, I was pretty much an outcast at school. Uh, nothing's actually changed. I just have more followers now on Instagram. <laughs> um, so um, how I got into cycling was uh, for my sins, going to an all-boys school where um, sports like rugby and cricket were mandatory, I fell in love with the dance. Okay, um, coupled with that, um, I went to a school um, where, being Jewish, there were only three Jews in the whole school, um, and uh, anti-Semitism wasn't uh, was was an accepted thing. Um, yes, um, wow. and. Um, and also, I had failed a, a year. I was behind in a year um, uh, uh, for, for my age. So I, I, I didn't really fit in. And besides that, I took up ballet um, and I got exempt from uh, school sports because of, um, you know, you didn't want to take knocks in the knees. And I was doing ballet almost every single day. Um, and this kind of added fuel to the fire of my own sort of, I uh, know it was, I, I chose to dance. Nobody else forced me to dance, but it almost created more of a, um, a barrier between me and my peers. And so I, I, I discovered the bicycle because I think I had a predisposition, a predisposition to, 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 um, to want to be alone, to escape from, reality, if one could call it that, to, to find a, a sense of freedom. Um, and cycling in, in, in South Africa then was definitely not seen as a sport. It was more as a, a hobby. And um, for me, it was, it was a sense of freedom and a sense of, of, of escaping. Um, 
and it's 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 a profound um, thing in anybody's life to get their first bicycle and go on their first journey on a on a bike. It's the most incredible, powerful, um, symbolic action one can do in the, in, in their life is to literally just get on a, a bicycle and, and ride. Um, so, so that's basically in a, nut, in a nutshell how I discovered the bike. Yeah. Well, you know, I agree with that because um, even in my teen years, I rode all the time and always rode by myself, loved it, um, you know, cycled most of my life. And, and then probably 10 years ago, we moved to the big city. It was not a safe place to really ride. And and you know life happens you get busy um and then fortunately we moved and uh now i live in an area where i cycle all the time i mean just this past weekend i, I did a 40 mile ride did it by myself and um and i'm like you i like to when i ride it's an escape it allows me to think it allows me to think clear it, it allows me not to have a lot of motion and people's voices around uh, you just you just kind of get into this zone and you're enjoying the ride. I mean, part of my brain is being competitive to what my numbers may be from the last time I rode. You know, am I doing a low intensity ride? Am I doing a high intensity ride? Uh, so I, I keep those things in mind because, you know, in a way it's a hobby. But at the same time, for, I'm, you know, I'm looking at 2021 with the possibility of maybe doing some time trial or doing some uh, endurance writings and doing some of the centuries. And for, for those of you watching, if you know a, a century, that's a hundred mile ride. And, um, but I, I love the fact that you went into ballet and in a way that kind of triggered this whole solo mentality, I guess is what we could uh, call it. And uh, you've kind of maintained that. So now cycling is a major part of your life. And, uh, it's um, it's it's the, it's all, it's my entire life. Um, it, it it really is. Um, and and just to just to uh, I just want to say something. I think cycling can't really claim that 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 meditation that that clarity. That's exactly what I get now from bike riding. Is because I think it, it just um, allows you to sift all the negative. It allows you to. Uh, there, there, we we humans shouldn't be sedentary. Right. We shouldn't. We should be moving all the time. Um, there is definitely something, um, the crossovers between yoga, cycling, dancing, running, um, long distance, swimming, going to the gym and doing repetitive actions, which creates you to get into a rhythmic breathing, breathing pattern. Uh, so so th th this, this is the one thing that there is a, this crossover between all physical activity. Um, and, and, and cycling and cycling alone to me is my Ferrari in life. It's my mansion in life. It's my island off the, the some tropical coast. That's what it is. It, it is something I, I, I love so much, um, because I get so much out of it and I can literally ride in a circuit, a four kilometer circuit for a hundred sixty miles. I'm going to convert it into miles now. We in the, we in the U.S. Um, in the U.S. So I'll, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so I'll ride. I, I do a minimum of of sixty sixty miles. When I go out on the bike on the road, it's a rule. I have to do a minimum of sixty miles. Wow. Um, so you're you're so far yeah. ahead of me. My minimum is fifteen because. <laughs> Because of my work schedule, I'm like, okay, I know I can get 15 this morning. Now on the weekends, that's my 30 to 40 plus on on that. And uh, but one of these days, I'm going to get up to where you're going because my goal is to get to to do a few of those centuries. And I know here in America, there's a couple of centuries that are hill climbs, and I want to kind of tackle maybe the two in California, the breathless agony and possibly the the death ride. They're 114 to 129 miles. You you live you live hey, probably in the greatest country in the world, and it's just got such a diverse landscape uh, from from east to west, or east uh, west to east, north to south. You just got so much land mass to ride on. It's like it's it's for me and the culture. I had a I had a chat with a a, a, um, a lady. Uh, she's a fixed gear authority influencer. 
a, a champion cyclist. Her name's Kelly Samuelson, and she and she, um, you know, and I was explaining to her that she lives the the, the country, your, the, the U.S. culture, cycling culture has got this incredible heritage, uniqueness. This this it's got a it's got a substance which is un, it is actually unparalleled in my opinion. Okay, with regards to the, to to the Europe, it's got this really incredible culture um uh, the the u.s cycling scene but let, oh, let's get back let's get back to yeah uh, but but you know i know when when you do come to the states we got to ride together we got to yes. ride together and, and, go, and go shooting yeah there you go oh absolutely absolutely yeah I, i've got enough ammo back here so we can definitely do that i mean i mean <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I, I'm stocked up. I'm stocked up. Well, let, let's let's talk about nutrition because this is where, you know, in, in my mind, you became famous. And what actually sparked your interest in nutrition? And now you've taken it to a whole nother level. So let's talk about that. Um, I think uh, let me let me start by saying this: I'm I'm body dysmorphic, uh, so I I'm either too small or, or I'm too big. Um, that's something which I know of myself. I'm, I'm obsessive compulsive as, as well. Um, so I'm, I'm, con I'm, I also suffer from depression. So I really know who I am and what I'm all about, all about. Um, how did I get really into nutrition? That happened 20 years ago, going on 21 years ago. Um, I took a, uh, 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 I put the, uh, the bike in the, in the back seat. And I took up bodybuilding. Um, I was more, it was more actually, I was, I actually started out, um, doing more sort of push ups and sit ups, very much military style exercise. I was doing, and this is no word of a lie, uh, uh, when I was 28, I would do, I'd wake up in the morning, I'd do 150 push ups, 300 sit ups. That's before I got, that's before I went to the toilet. It was a rule. I was, it was wow. a rule. Um, then I came home. I used to work in the arms industry back then. I used to come home from work, and I would do 660 push-ups, 880 sit-ups in one hour. Oh my gosh! In one so hour? Point, uh, in one hour. Yeah, yeah that's obsessive. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was. In those days, I was strong. You know, I see some people who claim to be strong now, and I think, geez, I would eat you in my t in my twenties. I'd eat you. <laughs> um, so, um, and then I I found the gym. I discovered the gym uh, and and pumping iron. And I just struggled. I used to train with this proper bodybuilder. Um, he he must have been about 30, 40 kilograms heavier heavier than me, and I just couldn't put on weight. And I used to come to the gym eating an energy bar back then it was I was eating carbohydrates yeah and um, and he just, what did he, he'd ask me what did you eat today I, said, I told him I'd eat a basic modern uh, Western diet uh, consisting of primarily carbs I'd have three meals a day breakfast lunch and dinner and um, I would uh, I just trained flat out that that's just one so I'm just burning all of these calories and I would literally plateau with my weight and he says you're never ever going to put on weight because you don't eat so he taught me how to eat so that's where the obsession started with uh, with nutrition so he taught me how to take in calories um so I, the, and then of course supplementation came into your creatines your beta alanines your your different whey proteins isolates concentrates and hydrolysates all of that all, it all started back then basically you know, in the, the heydays of uh, Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman. Oh, um, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm still a fan of bodybuilding. I, I, you know, I, I think it, that is the ultimate dedication um, yeah. to literally. It's it's what they put them th what they put themselves through. Uh, that to me, I, I admire dedication. That's what I admire most in people. Uh, it, it, I, I, I don't. I, I won't judge. I admire dedication. You know, no one's. You, you know, I, I, res, I respect others um, and, and I admire dedication. That's, 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 that's the whole thing. Well, how did you get into the, the, the keto diet? Okay, so now we're going to jump a, a few years later. So I, I adopted a, back then a pretty much a, um, this is pre-2013, I had adopted 
very much a high carbohydrate. Carbs was the carbs was king. All the the science science literature with the fancy words and the way it's written and all the peer PubMed reviews, all of this was rules. It still rules the world today. I mean, anyone can write something very. She said, "Sounds very fancy. So it must be real." <laughs> right. You know? that, exactly. that, that's that's that, that, that's 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 how that's how. Honestly, that's all been manipulated from my perspective in order for people. And there's also a thing called being psychosomatic. So if I tell you, if I'm your doctor and I'm going to tell you that take this tablet, you will feel better. There's an element of that placebo effect going into that being psychosomatic, that anecdotal effect. So just getting into how I became keto was um, – uh, there's a simple uh, uh, philosophy of the of the and here it is. It's the height of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Right, exactly. So, how did I become keto? Well, before t I think between 2010 and 2013, I disco discovered the Paleolithic diet. Um, I had a I'd lived with terrible gluten intolerance all my life um becoming from a coming from a traditional uh a jewish um, orthodox household uh, we ate our challah on a friday night we ate our matzah on the on the on the pesach i spent my life s sitting on the toilet and struggling wow okay and hey it's it's written in the scriptures <laughs> give us our day our daily bread right it's uh, you know so all of I think my this is actually a very interesting I think my um sort of journey into nutrition ward mm -hmm. has also allowed me to think about uh politics it's also allowed me to think about the, the the human beings as a as a species and how indoctrinated we actually are That's um true. and and you know I I I I'm I I am a Jew through identity and not through religion, because I don't practice Judaism as such, but I always used to say this uh, to my late father, to explain to me how if I eat a, a piece of pork, I'm fine on the toilet the next day, but if I have challah on a Friday night, I'm like a concrete mixer. Wow. So, so, so explain to me, explain to me this, if it's so, you know, how, why? Surely I should just, you know, this is, you know, what, what we've been eating for thousands and thousands of years. So, um, and then you, you also have to look at modern West, uh, modern medicine. Modern medicine is, is terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Do you, know why, do you know why it's terrible? Why, why is it terrible? It's reactionary. It's not preventative. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> no, you, you've hit the nail on the head. It's, it's based and on reaction. And Correct. they don't they, they don't have forward thinking because 100%. I get irritated because I live in a city, <clears throat> Houston, Texas. We have the largest medical center in not only the United States, but in all of the world. And <clears throat> as the city grew, they started building hospitals outside the medical center. So you have these miniature medical centers on the outer areas that they have built. And it irritates me to no end that every time they build one, it's almost like it's full the next day. And we have a vicious circle because when it comes to nutrition, here in the state of Texas, there's a restaurant on every corner. I think people no longer know how to actually prepare a meal. And I think you know, with the national, when the national shutdown had happened, people were forced to realize what the kitchen was in their house. And they had to start realizing, okay, there's a stove. Unfortunately, there's a microwave, but there's an oven and there's things that they need to learn to do. And now you're in control of your health. And a lot of people don't realize that. And those that do spend time in their kitchen, they need to understand they are in full control of their health. And, and Sean, you'll probably, I know you're going to agree with me on this. I tell people when they eat, do not eat based on the moment. Don't think about, okay, if I eat now, I, 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 I won't be hungry for a few hours. What we eat now 
you need to realize matters five years down the road, 10 years down the road, 15 down, years down the road. If you think long term, I don't want to be 65 and look and using a walker. I want to be 65 sitting on a time trial bike, trying trying to beat an hour for 25 miles. That's yeah. my goal because I want yeah. to walk, run, and jump when I get older. But it's based on how we fuel our body, and you are the master when it comes to fueling the body. So let's dip into the the whole keto thing for endurance so, training. So the keto thing basically came when my father died of esophageal cancer. Um, he died a terrible, terrible um, uh, death. Um, I literally it looked. My father was a, a short man, five foot seven inches. Um, he weighed uh, 96 kilos, which is probably about 200. Uh, he was a big guy, he, he, um, which is 200. What's that? About 220 pounds, I think, uh, give or take. And um, by the time he he passed, I was carrying him like a baby to and from the toilet, so he could because he was he was incapable of doing that at that, that point. And uh, he, um, my father was a, a, my late father was a pharmacist. Later, gone into the health industry with supplements, herbal supplements. Um, uh, he was very, very big into the alkaline diet, but still ate a massive carb diet. Wow! Um, and, I, and still to this day, um, when he, he his last uh, days in hospital, they were still feeding him carbohydrates, you know, for the meals in the hospital. And I was just, you know, now with my knowledge, it's, I mean, that's it's like going, <laughs> it's going. Uh, two steps forward but three steps back it's like well let's just keep on feeding those cancer cells because we've just radiate we've, we've just radiated your body and gave you chemotherapy okay um but now let's just keep on feeding those cancer cells well, yeah. so so that's where it all started was basically understanding that uh, if I, I do stand to be corrected but apparently science says that 98 percent of cancer cells uh, live in a glycogen environment that's right so if you starve a cancer cell if you if you prevent it from getting uh, its nutrition, it's not going to survive. Um, there are, I think, there's two strains or two percent of two percent of cancer cells work on fats. But ninety, I'd rather. I, I'm I'm happy to take the odds and just yeah, go with I'll the take 98%, the ninety eight percent favorable 100%. odds. <laughs> Correct. So, uh, um, and there was this this bloke on YouTube. This is how I came about it. He he had recovered from stage four cancer. From literally eating bacon and eggs, um, and they went. They they spoke about cancer cells existing in a glycogen environment. It's it's it's, it's, it's relatively old footage now. So that was the, the the main intention with regards to becoming ketogenic. Um, it was never ever for me a performance uh, a performance factor, and this is the interesting dis discussion. Uh, cycling is so driven by performance. It is. It is. Comp the industry is still in that 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 paramount performance basis. Um, that, that and they don't. Uh, you know, for me, I I kind of get frustrated and saying, well, I, I'm I'm 48 now. Um, I'm, I'm not going to ever ride the. I never rode the Tour de France. In fact, I was invited to a Tour de France stage, the last stage VIP tent, to go in the Mavic car. I turned it down. I'm just not interested. I'd rather <laughs> spend my time. Uh, seriously, uh, no, no, no word of a lie. I'd rather spend my time riding a bike than watching cycling. Yeah, uh, that's what I want to do. I don't want to watch somebody ride. I want to ride. Right. You know. So and 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 the whole the whole it's a slow shift, but it's all it's starting to take place. I mean, there are people there. There are people out there who ride almost every, every single day in Germany who don't even know who Peter Sagan is. I mean, this, oh is a, no, this, this is a fact. This is a fact, okay? Because it's not about being the fastest. It's not about doing the best wheelie. It's about riding, and that's how the ketogenic diet has changed my life. Because I remember going out when I was 16, 17, riding 30 kilometers out. That's uh, call it uh, 20 miles out. Uh, um, on, 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 on the bike, that's sorry, 20 miles, I think it's 50, uh, 40, 40, that's 40 kilometers, 20 miles. So, um, and I would get terrible hypoglycemia, terrible. I'd bonk, I'd just literally, I'd crash. Um, 
and and I would like almost like smell my mother's macaroni and cheese. Um, <laughs> I'm not, I, I promise you, it's, I, I remember these these bouts of hyperglycemia where um, this one time I lay in the long grass. Uh, this is just outside of Cape Town. Um, this is back in the eighties. There was no cell phones in those days. There was no. Um, I think there was just the, the start of the corn syrup gels and you made, I think there was one energy uh, barn on, on, on the market you could get. And I remember pulling the long grass out and sucking the roots of the long grass and laying hidden away. Cause I was, I was, I was, a, I was a lightweight in those days and, 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 and small. And I was obviously, you know, scared for my safety. So I remember laying there for like 45 minutes before I had my body, somehow it found the energy to, to, to ride back home. Um, and it's the most debilitating feeling, hypoglycemia. And why would you want to put your body through that? Why? Oh, I know. <clears throat> I have suffered from hypoglycemia for years, and that had happened to me cycling once, of going into low blood sugar, and mm. you're thinking, how in the world did I go in the low blood sugar? I thought I prepared my body correctly. And, and the same thing happened to you. And now with the keto diet that you're doing, because I'm wanting to learn more about that, the body is using fats as Correct. fuel. Because the thing that I'm trying to figure out is how do you make that transition where you know today's pro cyclists live on those, those carbs. I've seen them on the tour you know, grabbing the energy gel for the last 15 kilometers and they're sucking down that what, and it's not just glucose, it's maltodextrin. It's, it's, dextrose, total, yeah. it's total junk into their body to fuel. But how do you go from, you know, going from the, uh, depending on glucose where the liver is, has stored glycogen and then going into a very high fat, uh, healthy fat diet to fuel your body look the, look, the science of it is very simple you deplete your body of glycogen uh, it takes a couple of hours a couple of days um, sometimes depending on, on on the food sources you, you're eating um a lot of uh, you know if you really want to get technical about it, one can do fasted rides for, at very low intensity um because um you know uh, a lot of the science out there will say, and I don't like to talk about science because specifically when it comes to nutrition and also because of what happened to Professor Tim Noakes, um, I, I don't like to really mention uh, the, the science, give him any credit whatsoever because, um, you know, I, I would even go as far as saying that there's so much criticism on, 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 um, on products which you aren't supposed to be taking, but how many deaths are actually happening from that first type two diabetes. Right. You know, you understand yeah. what I'm trying to say. So I know. you've got this, in, you've got this industry that's fueling the consumption of, of, um, of, 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 of carbohydrate and carbohydrate is, is known for being highly addictive. And when somebody defends carbohydrates and they're not a pro cyclist and they're just a weekend warrior, and they say, you know, I just think, well, you just, you're, you're defending your addiction. And then you, and it's being justified because you've got uh, nutritional guidelines saying that it's, uh, this is the, 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 the macronutri macronutrition ratio that you should be consuming. And I ask myself, really? Seriously? You know, are you, are you, are you, it's, I, I, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. And the reason why it's terrible is because it's not allowing people to think for themselves. Yeah. Um, and I think this also stems to my, my views. I'm, I'm very much a libertarian. Uh, that I, you know, I, I, I don't like government to have, I like to have a, a minimal government in my life. Um, and I, and I, and I don't, I don't play loud music. I don't interfere with other people's business. Uh, I, I keep to myself. I stay away from, uh, I really do. And that's how I, you know, it's live and let live, but you've got industry that is perpetually pushing this, the cycle of consumption of carbohydrate. And, you know, if you, I stop off at sometimes to buy water at these corner cafes or these um, uh, cafes which are uh, affixed to, to um, service stations or garages, petrol stations, and I watch people's consumption behavior because I'm kind of fascinated by it because of, and they're buying the Coke and they're buying the, and, and the, 
and they, 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 you should, I, I sometimes feel like saying to them, you shouldn't put that down. Just yeah. Don't do it. You, 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 you're killing yourself. Um, and then the whole notion of these five small meals a day, um, if you're eating a high carbohydrate di diet to keep that blood sugar, uh, the blood glucose level stable, for me, it, 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 it's, well, well, let's just really overload that pancreas. Let's just keep, keep those beta cells just pumping out those insulin. That's why insulin resistance is a, is a, is a thing. Insulin well, resistance Sean, is a, is a, yeah. Let's use, I want to use um, a couple of uh, examples that you have proven. And <clears throat> because you rode your bike, and, I, and ladies and gentlemen, you need to look up Sean on Instagram because I saw the video where you rode your bicycle on a set of rollers. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want to look up rollers, you can look up rollers, but I'm not going to explain it right now. You, you rode a set of rollers for, was it 10 hours straight? Yeah, I did stop. I did stop once for the toilet and then I had, I had a photographer. <laughs> she wanted to move the rollers in the middle of the, of the, uh, of the, the room where, where I was. Um, but it, it was, I actually ended up riding for 11 hours and something, but I did, I did, um, I wanted to try and break the 24 hour record, but I didn't actually have enough nutrition. So I think I depleted after 6,000 calories. So I burned 6,000 calories without consuming anything, just water. And also the coffee machine at this venue had broken. So I was hoping to consume coffee during the, um, during the ride as well. But it was a 10-hour um, roller ride. I burned 6,000 calories. The data is on my, my Strava account. It's on Zwift. It's on the 29th of May of 2020. So you can all go and have a look at it. Um, and yeah, so... And how many kilometers was that? Six thousand? Uh, I think the or? no, the the it was. Um, I think the total kilometers was three hundred and seventy-four on the on on yeah. on the on the road. And it's very accurate. And the reason for that being is because <clears throat> I'm uh, the the power meter that I was using on my bike is made by Stages, and uh, it's an, an American brand, Boulder, Colorado. Um, <laughs> I'm a give huge fan. Them, give I, I, them a shout out. out. <laughs> yeah, I've got to give them a shout out because they, 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 we've had a, it's, it, they, listen, they're wonderful. They were, they were they're actually a wonderful bunch uh, there. Um, and it's a dual sided power meter. So therefore, it's measuring your left and your, uh, your right and your left side um, power. Um, and, and, the, and, it, and it's accurate. So basically, as, as, as hard as I pedal, as fast as I, I, I'm generating all the power. I haven't got any resistance. So I'm ha whatever power I have to, whatever power is made, it's made by how hard I'm pedaling. And then combined with the, the, the weight that, um, that I'm at um, and the, the various terrain that I'm riding on because it's linked now to Zwift. So it will work out how fast you are going versus the weight and if you're on a cert that, that certain gradient. So I chose a course that um, was relatively flat, so it didn't have any uh, undulation because when you, when you hit um, an ascent on a, on a set of rollers without any resistance, you literally run out of cadence to keep the speed up because um, you've got no resistance on the wheels. It's not a smart, you do get smart trainers which create resistance on right. the rollers, but this 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 literally was um, a uh, set of rollers which has no resistance. So you have to uh, you you max out. I think I'd max out at and the, and, the, and the back wheel starts snaking snaking. I'd max out at 500 watts, um, wow. and I can't sustain that because it actually becomes kind of dangerous. Yeah. Um, I don't have I don't have the 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 absolute skill to maintain um, you know 120 to 130 cadence for uh, minutes on end. Um, but the, 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 the most important thing is that it was accurate data. Um, and I think the, the power meters rated at 98% accuracy, um, with a 2% discrepancy. Um, and, um, but all the data is there. So anyone who, um, doesn't believe it happened, it was there. I also had various people coming to witness it. Um, I had a, a, the, the owner of the company and the, and the office w was there until, until uh, to, to, to actually monitor. The goal was nine hours, but I just threw in an, an extra hour and then I wanted to do, I wanted to go for longer. Um, but I, I, 
the side man. Well, how job's long, done. what did you have to do prior to that to get your body ready to fuel your body? No, nothing. 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 So, nothing. What, so Absolutely what do nothing. you... In fact, I, for, I force fed myself the, the night before. Uh, really? I, I, I was so excited about the event. Um, I was just so hyped up about it. Um, I... I, I Nothing. I, I realized I could do I could do something like this was um, uh, I, I did a, a Grand Fondo in Jordan uh, in 2019. And uh, I really rode hard that that, that was a substantial ride. Um, it was 198 kilometers uh, through the Jordanian desert from uh, the Dead Sea to um, the Red Sea. And um, I the, the organization wanted me to enter in the elite section, the solo elite section. I was racing against the national team and, and, um, and, the, and the, the exercise was merely to animate the race. Um, my goal, my personal, personal goal was to finish the 198 kilometers without refueling. Wow. So I'd never done that longer ride uh, without refueling. So it was just my goal. I didn't want to do well in the race. I just wanted to do ride it do what I come to do to promote the country, promote the ride. But my goal was to, um, to, um, to just to, to give it, to give it horns. Uh, sorry, just to, to complete without, complete without nut uh, nutrition on, along the way, obviously with water. Um, the night before I had a steak with extra butter, but I will tell you that that day, or I think the previous day, um, I had for the first time, uh, I think it was sheep's testicles. Oh my god! Okay, um, and uh, I had a whole lot of organ meat. Uh, it was liver, kidney, brain as well. Brain as well. Really? Um, I was. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it was th th that that food as well because you know the Chinese say that. Uh, she doesn't talk about China, but the Chinese say that if you have a problem with an organ, eat an organ. Um, well, I, I, yeah, that's very, very true in Chinese uh, uh, medicine. Medicine, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like for so, like. So the, the, I, I, had, I had this meal, I think it was probably about 24 hours prior to, to, to the actual ride. I also didn't sleep at all the night before because we had to travel from 1.30 or 2.30 in the morning. To, uh, took two hours to get to the start. Um, at, 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 by 4.30, because of the heat, you know, you want to get get out early. So yeah. I didn't really have a, 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 any sleep, in fact. And I, the race, the, the ride started, and I, I just gave it horns from the word go. And if I was going to bonk and explode, I would have done it in the first 90 minutes because I was riding at my functional threshold power, literally that fast. Um, and I broke away for the first 30 kilometers, um, and then I just gave it, I just kept on attacking and just lit the race up for the next uh, 70 kilometers. And then, I, and then I wanted to wait for these other ambassadors, but they were so far behind me that my backup car took an hour and a half to get back to me. And I was in the middle of the desert without any water now. Oh, my really? gosh. So, so, yeah. you, so you didn't need any of these dumb energy gels whatsoever. Oh, no, no. I was, I, was watching, I was watching all that stuff going down with the other competitors. And I was actually, like, for me, it was, once again, that's incredible. I'm just like shuffling this water, that tinkle, you know, the car, more, more of this sugary water. I, nothing, nothing. Wow. And, um, and then I told the, my support vehicle to go back and just get a time check between how far the, 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 these people were behind me because um, I let, the, I let the, the guys go on. And um, so I soft pedaled for probably about, 10 Ks, and I thought to myself, this is like about 20 minutes have gone by. This is, not, you know, no, it was more. It was about half an hour went by, and I was thinking to myself, Where's, where are these people? Where are they? And they must come back now because they're only 14 minutes behind from the previous time check. Um, so I'm just thinking, they have to come back now. So they're not coming back. So I thought to myself, now the camels and the, you know, on the side of the road, and it, it was an incredible adventure. You were still maintaining your strength and yeah, your yeah, speed. Yeah, 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 yeah. And eventually, I thought to myself, well, I'm definitely. I had like a, a, probably a, one fifth of a bottle left of, of of water, and I thought to myself, well, let me rather finish, try and finish this ride, 
and die instead of in the baking, you know, staying on the side of the road. That, that was my, my logic. And I just put the power down back again. And I started closing the six people, uh, the five, four people, I think there were four people. I finished fifth overall. Wow. And I started closing on them in, in, in the distance. Eventually, my, my, my car came back. And I just, I actually was on such a high. Um, I just felt, I was just feeling so good. Eventually, when I got some water, sparkling water, I remember the, the sparkling water came out and I was just guzzling that down uh, on the move. And um, I, I, I was catching these guys. I mean, in, in hindsight, I should have just played it wise and I could have walked away with that, that race easily. Um, but the, the, the long and the short of it is, I did it without any fueling. And I finished the ride. And it took me five hours forty six minutes for the for the the total the 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 one hundred ninety eight k's. Um, I burned four thousand eight hundred and fifty one calories. I only ate two hours after I got back to the hotel after I'd packed my bike into my bike bag. I just took a handful of 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 um, there were there was a keto nut mix at one of their like supermarkets, and I just thought it was so novel just to have this nut mix. So I, I had that, uh, you know, in, in in the hotel room with me, and that's that's what that's what I ate. You know, that happens that's... to me when I finish maybe, yeah. you know, a thirty or forty mile ride. When I get back home, I don't eat immediately when I get off the bike. It may be an hour, and there have been times when it'd be two hours later, and I'm like, oh wait a minute, I I need to get my protein back into my body, and. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of shocked. And, you know, I've researched those, those energy gels that, you know, all of the, the pro cyclists of the weekend warriors are using, and it's pure poison. It I mean, is. I actually used Look. one of the most popular energy gels before a ride once. In the middle of the ride, I think I was on a, I think I was on a 30 mile, maybe a 40 mile ride. And halfway, I went into low blood sugar. And I'm thinking, why? But the, the gel was so, I mean, it was maltodextrin. It was just total junk through and through. And, and they act like, and, and what was astonishing, when I watched the Tour de France this year, and in the last stage, they showed one of the top riders. He actually had the same energy gel taped to the top tube of the bike, and I'm thinking, you're gonna suck down that junk, and you're in the tour? What is wrong with you? I was stunned. Look, you, you know, <laughs> there is, there is, um, I, 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 let, let me put it to you this way. Let me put it to you this way. The body is an, inc- the human body is an incredible vessel, and I just kind of think to myself, well, we have to, how, why? We animals at the end of the day. We're yeah. an intelligent animal. Why, and I, 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 this is a whole, I don't want to digress because I don't <laughs> want to throw my, my, my curveful conversation, which I have with very close, close, close friends. But why are we so, why, why, why is the rest of nature so settled in their ways? Yeah. You understand what I'm trying and, to say? You don't yeah, see, oh yeah, you don't, and they're afraid to change. Lion, they're afraid to change. You know, no, it's, I mean, that as well, but you don't see a lion. Why has the animal kingdom remained without really evolving. Humans have evolved so rapidly over the last 20, 30,000, 40,000 years. Why, why is this? Why, why, why are we still arguing on what foods to eat? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, the lion hasn't changed their diet. The, the tiger hasn't changed the diet. The, the, the deer hasn't changed their diet. Why? You know, so I don't want to, I don't want to, this is a, it's a, it's a good, a good argument. So maybe this, I'll just throw, maybe something is manipulated with us. Maybe something else no, has manipulated it, us. It, it's, it's total manipulation. It's, yeah. it's marketing, um, you know, where, because I've been in the supplement industry for over 30 years. And I, t- I have to tell people, when you read an ad or if you read an article, you have to be careful that what you're reading may have some truth of research but also you need to understand there's a marketing side to that to get the reader <laughs> to buy it, you know, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. And so there are things that, you know, there are things that I take for cycling. You know, I'm a big D ribose user. Um, you know, I know the research on D ribose. I know, uh, I've interviewed golden, uh, Olympic gold medalist 
who have done wonders where their strength was maintained, their stamina, their endurance. They didn't lose time if they were in heat number four within so, a two-hour window. I mean, the list goes on. I was a big D. Ribos fan too, once upon a time. But it's 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 sugar really at the end of the day. It's still it's still stimulating your insulin. Right. And that's and that and that that, that is something that I want to I want to get away from. Um, and, and there is, look, there is eventually a, a cutoff point where your body becomes like, for instance, I really, really felt that um, 6,000 calories was pretty much my limits with regards to, to um, riding without refueling. Um, but the, just, just to, to, to get on to the, the keto, um, we always bring in the pro cyclist or the top, top elite cyclist. Um, Carbohydrate is really a weak fuel. It's a terribly weak fuel. Your body, it's the easiest thing your body will tap into. Um, it's, it's, it's not a strong fuel. It's a, it's a short-term fuel. It's got no longevity to it. You have to keep on refueling yourself. Well, what are the normal so, diets for a pro cyclist? Are they vegan? Are they vegetarian? Are they uh, kind of half and they're, half? They're, 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 they're one, one or two that are probably uh, vegan. Um, and it's profound because they're vegan, but there's... They generally all kind of like a, have a balanced, uh, sort of a balanced um, animal product versus uh, plant-based uh, okay. with regards to, to the diet. But getting back to being ketogenic, and regardless if you're eating animal foods or, or, or plant-based foods, you can still be ke ketogenic. But my question to somebody who, who, um, who isn't racing for a living, okay, you, you know, these pro cyclists, they put themselves through tremendous danger just with the, 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 the way that uh, there's been a t tremendous amount of criticism with how the races have been held and the finishers and the, the race organizers that aren't actually really thinking about rider safety. And also the way, the, you know, going through the, the convoys, it's, it's, it's really hell, hell out there. It's a, it's a war zone. And, and they also now they're putting this, this fuel into their system because they're coaches. Their coaches will tell them this. Their sports doctors will tell them this. This is the best, most optimal fuel for you to be to be riding. These guys, some of these guys have come from nowhere. Yeah. They've got a, a great VO2 max. They've got a great physiology, which has allowed them to become these super, super athletes. But they don't really, they aren't really thinking for themselves nowadays. And now, now so more than ever, because it's a big business. You know, Very it's a big, big business. Well, I have it's literally. There. They, they get told when to ride, how many hours they must ride, what to eat, when to eat. So it, it, it's, it, are they actually thinking for themselves? So, but this is their profession. Yeah. They need to get the results. They need to perform well. They need to achieve in order to get the contract for the ensuing year to have a, a career as a professional cyclist. But there were, hundred, I think, how many riders rode this year? 198 riders. In America alone, in 2018, they, the, the survey said that there was 50 million cyclists out there. 50 million. Why must they all be eating carbs right. if you aren't going to be racing? The beautiful thing about being ketogenic is that you are sustainable on the bike. When you, be, when you get into a state of ketosis, you become more lucid. You don't run the risk of riding for two, three hours and becoming hypoglycemic and actually becoming a danger on the bike. Um, if you always have to continuously fuel yourself, you become like a human blending machine. It's like it was just like press a button, take a shake, you know, and you continue. You know, it, 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 there's, there's so many um, advantages to being ketogenic and an endurance athlete. You don't litter. You don't have to carry all the spare food with you. That means if you're riding a, 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 tu, uh, a, a, a clincher or an inner, inner tube setup, means you can take more tubes with you, you, you because you don't have to stick, um, you know, all these other gels and bananas and bars in your in your back pocket. Um, it, it's it's also you you find you go to the toilet less because you aren't you aren't drinking all the time the carbohydrate drink to refuel yourself, so you aren't part, you aren't having to pass water so much. Um, you're only drinking to thirst. You aren't drinking to to, 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 you know, carb, you know, carb load. So all of these factors, why would you want to be dependent on a substance? We are dependent on so much. Our smartphones are making sure that our smart devices on the bikes charged, our electric 
group sets are charged. Why do you want to become, gee, I must get more gels, you know? I've watched so many videos of these YouTube vloggers um, crying on the side of the road, literally crying on the side of the road because they don't have energy, riding 200 Ks and they're completely bonked, you know? Well, okay, you bring up a good point. We all, you know, in cycling, we all hear about hitting the wall. I've never hit the wall yet. Um, and you've proven that by going keto with endurance type sports, especially, you know, cycling's probably, you know, is at the top besides, you know, a marathon runner and things of that sort. You've probably never ever hit the wall by doing no, keto. No, I have. I've, I've hit the wall also being ketogenic, but it wasn't from a lack of, uh, it wasn't from a lack of uh, energy. It was from... Um, uh, chronic fatigue, because I've I suffer I've suffered from chronic fatigue, and I, I got my first bout back in 1998 when I was doing all of those crazy those crazy exercises. I got my second overtraining syndrome uh, with Epstein Barr virus in 2009. Wow! Um, and then I've always I've always battled, and I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia uh, in 2017. So I've managed to monitor and manage my um, my chronic fatigue with the ketogenic diet, because you aren't constantly getting hungry, whereby you are putting a strain on your adrenal glands um, uh, because your body goes into starvation mode. You're, you, you're constant. You're, you're burning. Your, your body doesn't feel that, that, that need to let you know you're hungry. Uh, you, you don't get hungry. You just function. Well, you have the um, perfect example because – and I want all of my viewers to realize that Sean is correct um, and, and I've taught many of you the same thing. Sugar feeds – cancer cells. And you've seen this with your own father, Sean. Mm. Uh, I saw my it in, I saw my, it in my own my, my own father. You know, we live in a society where glucose is feeding cancer. It's feeding diabetes. Ladies and gentlemen, Alzheimer's has been nicknamed type 3 diabetes. I mean, our yeah. brain is 70% fat. Why are you yeah. feeding it sugar? And, exactly. You know, so like, yeah. and, you know, and Sean, you're not the only one that's, that's told me this. I know people who do keto and mentally they feel fantastic. They're focused. Uh, they don't get depressed. Uh, clear thought. They remember things. They, they learn more effectively. And sugar and refined sugar is just detrimental to the body. Now, I know a lot of people out there sometimes don't understand the difference between a simple carbohydrate and a complex carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. But, you know... How much of your diet consists of fruits and vegetables? Um, the only fruit that I have in my fridge is an avocado pear. Uh, oh, and I have goji berries as well. Oh, I do okay. have goji berries. But when I say I have goji berries, I have two tablespoons a day. So if you work that out in grammage and how many calories are in that. And also there's, there's, it's a, a goji berry has very small amounts of, 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 uh, of carbohydrates. It's, got a, it's actually got protein. I think 10, 10, um, 10 grams per 100 grams is actually protein. Um, and uh, so I do, I do, um, I actually, do you know, I actually take it. I have to, I'm, I'm, I've got nothing to hide. I take it for, um, uh, for almost like it's, it's you're gonna laugh, but I actually take it almost like a tr like a trace around. So I know if I've, I, I when I go to the toilet, yeah. no jokes. Um, I see if I passed how much food is I've digested in my my, my own. It's like a, it's it's I can visually see if I, if if it's my food has gone through and if I'm digesting well because digestion it, to me is also optimal. Yeah. It's optimum. It, it, I, I sometimes take probiotics uh, now and then. Um, I, I drink a lot of apple cider vinegar. Well, not a lot, but I, I, I regularly drink apple cider vinegar. So I'm very much also into gut health as well. And um, so I, I, I use I use the goji berries, you know, just kind of like as a I can see where things are going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, but the but I have an avo um, in my, in my fridge. Um, I, oh, I, I'm a big fan of English cucumber. Really? A big fan of yeah, and I'll tell you why. Because I find it so easy, specifically after rides. I, I it's so um, I'll probably consume an entire English cucumber because it's just ninety percent of it's water. Right. So it's a way of hydrating, um, and it's full of uh, electrolytes and, and and minerals, and um, so so I eat a, a lot of uh, English cucumber, um, but I don't do any other uh, fruits. Well, so um, what are, what, are your, what about the vegetables, and what are some of your favorite fats? 
Oh, uh, so in my fridge, I've got macadamia nut oil, eat a lot of macadamia nut butter, uh, coconut oil, um, loads of, I don't eat, um, I, I eat a load of uh, salmon oil. That reminds me, I'm totally out. Uh, there was a, there was, there was a time, there was a time um, when I was, I, I had a, a, a I, I smashed my face into a truck and I actually fractured some vertebra and I lost sensation in, in the rear of my arm uh, down for a year. Um, and uh, I, I remember I was consuming up to 21 capsules of salmon oil a day because some uh, there were. I read an article about uh, your nerves are surrounded by myelin. Your, the myelin sheath is essentially omega-3 fatty oils, and the best omega-3 fatty oils are is, is fish oil. There's oh, fish, yeah. fish, fish, fish oil is the best it, for anti-inflammatory. Uh, it's it's absolutely best. I mean, look, I'm starting to age now, but Everyone says, geez, you look so young for your age. And um, that's also, I take a lot of beta alanine and the uh, L carnosine from the beta alanine is also very good for anti aging. So, any oh, people yeah. that have longevity. Yeah. So, um, the, the beta alanine, alpha lipoic acid, loads. And also, uh, the omega 3 is, uh, lowers the insulin. Um, uh, it, 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 it really helps with insulin sensitivity and um, it really is healthy for, for, for that. So, from weight management, but you've got to understand you can't do what I do and eat carbohydrate. You're right. either going to be eating fats and protein or, 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 or not because the, you, you, as soon as you take in anything which stimulates your insulin, your insulin is your master fat storing hormone. So you kind of like now you're storing fat and your body's going to tap into the carbohydrate it's just consumed first before before you, it goes into the fat, but and then you stop doing whatever you're doing, and you become sedentary, and that fat just gets stored. So right. you've got to understand the, the the process that's happening inside of of, of the body when when you're consuming the, the carbohydrate. So and that's how it is. And also, we all have different um, uh, rates of of uh, our or I should should say um, varying degrees of metabolic health. So if somebody has suffered from a terrible, a terrible diet, they're obese, um, they've got thyroid issues, they've got um, insulin sensitivity, it's going to take them a long time to reboot them, their, their system. But if you take somebody who's relatively fit, who's, who's pretty much in, you know, in, a, in a, a good metabolic way, they're going to respond well to, to, to it. Um, and also... Uh, I'm very passionate about it, and, and I do come across as being very passionate. But you know, I, and and I do a lot of social media hype as well uh, on social media, and and I'm very evangelistic about 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 it. A lot of the time, you know what? I did more for a downloads, a download, comments, a comment, and 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 social media is. I know how to work social media, so I don't mind hate speech. Um, so the, 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 but the, but the long and the short of it is, you know what, live and let live. Um, yeah. if I can offer, if I can lend a piece of advice or offer a piece of advice, I will do it. If you get benefit from it, fantastic. I, I have, I really have changed people's lives around the world with uh, shedding light on the ketogenic diet. Well, absolutely. I mean, you got my yeah. attention because I wanted to know how you were doing this with, you know, having endurance, the stamina, the strength. And and then, you know, I watched all I watched most of the stages of the tour this year. And and of course, part of me was looking at more of body type because you know, some of these kids, they're, they're 19, 20, 21 years old, and literally they look like a stick. But then you get people like, you get people like Peter Sagan <laughs> and Sam Bennett that actually have leg muscles you can actually see. And mm. I'm thinking, what is the diet different? What is the training difference? You know, even well, look, the winner, you... the winner of the tour this year, which shocked me, um, which I'm happy for him. But yeah. his coach earlier this year told him, I need you to take a week off. Correct. Do not touch the bike because I don't want you peaking too early Just, at correct. the tour. And, you know, yeah. he's now 20, 20, uh, 22 years old. But, you know, yeah. like you said, the coach determines what he's going to ride and what he's going to eat. Correct. 
Correct. So it's it's a case of you know back in it's 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 you know what it, it's it's I I, I I watched the I watched the tour. I'm, I maybe watched every stage. I, I, no, I didn't. I didn't watch every stage. I didn't watch anything live. I, I think the the, the, the longest the, yeah. the the longest footage I ever watched was the highlight package of four minutes. A, a cycling for me is not pro cycling. Yeah. Cycling for me is when I go out tomorrow and I ride my bicycle. Yeah. That's cycling to me. Pro cycling is just an avenue right. of cycling. Uh, brands, I'm involved with a lot of brands, and they, and they get they get credibility from from uh, partnering or sponsoring or or supporting a pro a pro cyclist or pro cycling team. Um, with regards to body types, Peter Sagan is definitely more of a, a fast switch muscle a fiber a build where. Um, um, I don't even, I've, I've even forgotten the name of, uh, it's, uh, you got Rolick and you Primus, got a bunch of yeah, others out there. Yeah, let's talk about Primus Rog, Rogelik, because uh, I, yeah. I, I like him because he's, he's an absolute gentleman. Um, and, and I, I like, I like, I like people who are, who are, he's really a, a good sportsman. Uh, he's, a, he's got he's incredible sportsmanship. He's an absolute gentleman. And that's kind of like, I, I like, and also he, you know, he, he came from a, uh, he was an incredible ski jumper. He, he had a terrible accident and then rose again. Uh, so I, I like I like stories like that. So I'm I'm very I'm very pro uh, Primus Rogelik. Um, so he's he's a he's a slow twitch. Um, you know he can sprint as well, but he's not built. He's he's built more for lightweight, uh, for long long sustained um, uh, uh, power outputs for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Where Sagan is more of a sh short, explosive right, uh, the sprint, sprinter. sprinter. Yeah. But you know, also another thing about cycling, and and this is probably why I I, I consider myself a, a cycling anti-hero, is because um, I, I I I just find a cyclist's body really unattractive, <laughs> really unattractive. <laughs> um, uh, I I I I I know about bodies, and and uh, they're just no. Nah. No, the yeah. well, guys, the guys look. The guys look like girls, and some of the. I don't want to. I don't want to lose all my followers. But uh, so. No, well, well, let me ask you this because yeah, for all no. of my viewers and all of my <laughs> listeners, you have your own clothing line, and how did that start? Ah, uh, that's a <laughs> Sacco Seven. Yes. Yeah. Um, keep on always keep on forgetting about that. Yeah, I actually have a clothing line. Um, <laughs> Do you, do you know I also started a supplement company as well? But well, that's another conversation. Um, <laughs> so the, it started because I have a sock fetish, and I, I when I was I still live in South Africa, but in South Africa, um, in fact, here's an old here's an old mannequin with the, with the socks on it. Uh, oh, so, that's right, because uh, it started with socks before yeah, it went correct, into. Yeah. Uh, the, and, the cycling jerseys and things. Correct, correct. And uh, I forgot that I actually uh, socks was my main thing. Um, so that's how it all started with socks. And um, the the two designs arrived. They were made in North Carolina in in the U.S. by a company called Defeat, best socks in the world. Um, and um, that's a nice shout out for them. Uh, yeah. So uh, they really are. Um, when they arrived in South Africa, they were pink and baby blue, and they were high top. And no one in South Africa was wearing pink and baby blue socks. They were only wearing black and um, and ankle socks. Uh, the, the, the high top socks was just not a thing. It was a thing for Sean for Sean Sacco, but not not for anyone else. <laughs> and I'd invested all my money in in making these socks, and uh, I had no choice but to sell them. I had no. It was no. I, it was a. The brand was started out of necessity more than ambition. It really, that's how it started. And the only way um, I could get my socks to sell was outside of South Africa. And I really had a fascination with social media, and that's how it started. And I just started plugging away. And wow. each day, if there was something positive that happened, and I think in two, three months, I'd sold the, half my stock to a shop in, in Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia. And... Uh, by the end of that year, things my life had radically changed. Um, wow! Yeah, so uh, pink, pink and baby blue was never my thing. It was, it was just a way to make get the message across. Black well, is my it, thing. Well, it works. Yeah, so, well, yeah, I know black yeah, is definitely yeah. uh, your thing. You know, it's funny because I have 
tons of cycling socks. I've got bright pink, bright orange, blue, you know, day glow yellow, and, and the list goes on. And, you know, it, it to me, it's just kind of, it's, it's fun. It, it's kind of like the fun element when you're putting on your gear. It's really the socks. You know, most people look at it as for whatever jersey they're wearing. But to me, it's, sometimes it's the socks. But uh, well, I, 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 coined, I coined the phrase that the socks make of the kit. Um, so that's, that's that was that's the that's the foundation of of, of Sacco Seven was, you know, the the, the socks and um, and then it just, just evolution happened and I think the kit kind of sort of also really took over. There's some exciting things uh, happening and um, I think I do believe that uh, you know there's been a little bit of a lull from you know behind the, the scenes and I do believe there's going to be a, a nice new resurgence, new exciting things happening. And of course, you know, I started my own sort of um, uh, podcast uh, ambassador network business called the Lone Wolf Cycling Club, and I actually want to get this video to post on the. Oh, on absolutely! The actual, I want to post it. Uh, it's obviously going to be a little bit more than an hour, but yeah. we'll definitely get the highlight, and I want to definitely post it on the on the Lone Wolf Cycling I'll, I'll Club. I'll send you the complete uncut version. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Actually, if you could edit it and send me the, the I will. tightest version, yeah, I'll I do will. that. Because, but, but the the thing is, with, um, I think because I really do live a lone life, I, 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 alone. I, I there's no, I have no family. I've got no dependents. I've got no girlfriend. Just me and my bikes. That's how I live. I spend a tremendous amount of time on my my social media, uh, working with other brands. Um, always thinking I'm, I, I, I'm, I have a problem with my, my with overthinking and I spend a tremendous amount of time watching uh, YouTube and I'm into space physics, um, jet fighters, nutrition, uh, bodybuilding. I mean, if you look at my history in my, in my YouTube, you'll see, I mean, it's very diverse. Um, well, if you ever and, come to Houston, I'll take you to NASA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen! Absolutely. Look, I, I, you know, I, I, I've befriended um, the, uh, the 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 lead um, and also the social media manager of the F twenty two demo team. Wow! Um, because I've, I, I actually I, I sport the F twenty two Raptor on this side and the F thirty five on this side tattoos on, on my ribcage. Just I'm, I listen. I'm a, I'm a and I've got uh, the Saturn five Rocketeer and the, my Spaceman. <laughs> I, 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 Every, all, all my, you know, it's a book of my life. Uh, the, all my the tattoos that I have, it's really all the influences that I have uh, in my life. I've even got Oakley. I mean, this I grew, this was my Greg Lamar. I mean, I can go, go on and on and on about how the influence of my life. Yeah. Um, uh, and you know, it's, somebody once said to me in an ex acquaintance, he, he said like, no, no, no one would be interested in you. I, I made. I should actually write because I. I've been to Antarctica, I've worked in the arms industry, uh, and he actually said this com comment, and I actually, it's always resounded in the back of my head how negative that was and how people are now actually interested. And I think there was another comment that he would never make it without me. And, you know, all of these things kind of like, well, mm, that's interesting. So I just, uh, you know, I've, I've got genuinely world recognition. You um, do. In, you my, do. Small, in, my small, in my small little bubble. And I, I start where, where I actually started was in a small room with boxes. I've been there. I know exactly okay. what you're talking about. Uh, nothing, nothing has changed. I've got a very humble and modest life. I really do. But I've got the best life. Amen. I get to ride my bike whenever I want to. I love it, Sean. And that, and that is, and that's it. And that, I, that's all I want. And you know what? When I'm 80 or 90, when I probably slow down, because I, I want to keep on pushing through. And, and that's why I'm so heavily into nutrition, because that's the key. That's the key. I don't want to listen to um, what my, my, my doctor my, – I love my doctor and my GP. I won't, won't mention the names, but um, she, she's, an incredible, she's been a pillar of strength to me as a counselor, as a confidant. Um, for, for, for stuff to get burnt off or stitched up or an injection. But I don't go and see her if I've got a uh, – I don't really get upper respiratory tract infections. I don't get sick. I actually don't get sick. Um, and if I do feel run down from a, a, um, a, an upper respiratory – like a sore throat or a scratchy, I'm a big echinacea user. I, I use a lot of echinacea. Oh, um, 
I, I've got and, mine. I was using it yesterday as well. Because okay. we, we, had a cold, we had a cold front come through yesterday. Yeah. And I walked outside and for some reason it kind of hit me in the back of the throat. I'm like, nope, I've, I've got two <laughs> big interviews coming up this week and I, I need to have the voice. And I took my echinacea and a, a few other things and hey, I'm great. So, and, and, you know, and I was thinking the other day, I, I just once again, I always overthink things. And I'm just thinking, you know, this, it's 43% uh, alcohol. And <clears throat> my, my, my brother-in-law's got his, he's built his own sort of craft distillery and he's making brandy and he's making uh, whatever other um, rum and, and he's got the off, uh, you get the off, you know, you can set the, uh, the, the, the percentage of the alcohol. And he was, um, he was, I stopped, I always stop there for uh, a, um, a water or, or a pee because it's, it's on my lap route where they live. It's on my, it's on my, uh, and, and, and it was, and it just t tasted like echinacea. And I had a little, a little syringe taste of it. And I felt all of a sudden good. Okay. And it wasn't because I was intoxicated and probably because <laughs> I, I probably was, but, and I was just thinking maybe the echinacea has just got such a strong cycle that, 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 tincture that that alcohol taste has got such a strong a subliminal effect it, it sort of triggers something and also when you get an itchy scratchy throat i was also thinking it does your you do salivate into your throat and you do swallow it down and that probably that mechanical mechanism is probably one of the big key factors but i buy that stuff like in you know, if I go through a liter a month, it's probably average. To oh, yeah. The, I, the, I, I love my echinacea, and I yeah. love my yeah. mataki defraction mushroom. The, the mushrooms, I love them. Yeah, yeah. I love them. I, and, I, I'm, I'm a big Chinese mushroom person. And, and, and do, you know, do you know that mushrooms, um, do you know when they talk about, uh, you know, the whole vegan movement is they talk about uh, uh, um, plants don't have feelings or they don't have sensory. You know that mushrooms have the biggest global network apparently they are actually an intelligent um i have you know, read the, I've, i have yeah. read that and, and what is so <laughs> cool about mushrooms uh, being just this powerful polysaccharide uh every mushroom has something similar to one another but then they have their own unique medicinal makeup i mean you know mataki is considered the dancing mushroom the king of mushrooms you know it's, it's great people use it for cancer you know cordyceps is an energizing mushroom yeah. reishi yeah. can be calming lion's mane is directed to the nervous system and to the brain and the list goes on and yeah there's there's a whole new science on that but sean i want to thank you so much for giving us your time ladies and gentlemen we are uh, live via from Cape Town, South Africa. Sean Seiko here giving us the rundown on the keto diet, endurance training, endurance sports. If you're the even a weekend warrior, you got to go keto. I have so many friends on keto, and I will tell you this. Keto, you think about it like this. It is anti-diabetes. It's anti-arthritis. It's anti-cancer. It's anti-obesity. So if you want to be pro-life, pro-living, you got to go keto. That's the only way to go. Any last words there, Sean? Look, um, I'm, I'm, I'm t it's, uh, you know, just chatting to you and, 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 uh, and, and getting to know you a little bit, I'm just like, a, I, I really am pleased to have had the, the chance. And also, I'm very much into quantum mechanics, and um, this has kind of like fueled my... <laughs> Mike, you know, the, we, are, we are so connected, but the world is big and small at the same time. Yes. But, um, I mean, what are the chances we, we, we kind of vibrate in that same sort of frequency and ideals? And, and really, what are the chances? Uh, you know, how many yeah. times do I, do I even, you know, I'm just, it's, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, it's, it's, I, I'm really pleased that you invited me on your show and, and I had the opportunity to share my, my, my story uh, with you and also just to, to hear a bit about you as well um it's i'm really grateful thank you very very much well thank you so much sean and ladies and gentlemen stick with me we'll be right back after this message <laughs> 